Hello guys, welcome back. Today, uh, today we are going to learn a tool which is called uh, Ansible. Uh, as far as I know, it's an it's a powerful automation tool under the Linux, and most people use it to deploy their products on the cloud or on the server. Um, but as I think, every powerful tool has some side effects, which is it may be very hard to learn and to be able to uh, use it freely. So that's why I record this video. On the one hand, I could teach you guys. On the other hand, I could learn it for myself. Uh, so here, let's say this is a getting started page. Okay, let's read those texts. Now that you have read the installation guide, oh, I didn't tell you guys how to install this. Uh, to be honest, it can be as simple as uh, this. You just have to run this line, line of code, as simple, and done. Okay, after that, let's uh, read this again. As long as you have installed that, you are ready to learn how Ansible works. A basic Ansible command or a playbook, it contains three parts. Select machines to execute against from Inventory. Oh, if you ask me what is a uh, inventory, it's just a list of hosts where it contains a bunch of IP addresses connects to those machines or network devices or other managed nodes, usually over SSH. So this is how you connect uh, or how Ansible connected uh, to our server. It uses SSH protocol. Copies one or more modules to the remote machines and starts execution there. Um, so why people use uh, Ansible? Because it provides a lot of different modules to do different uh, kind of tasks. And what this framework does is to copy those modules to the remote machine and run your commands that you have defined. Ansible can do much more, but you should understand the most common use case before exploring all the powerful configuration deployment and uh, features. This page illustrates the basic process with a simple inventory and a 80 hot command. This is just a command like any other program, for example, the Docker. Once you understand how Ansible works, you can read more details about uh, those commands, organize your infrastructure with uh, inventory and somehow like that. Okay, let's let's get started by reading those uh, sections one by one. The first one is selecting machines from inventory. Ansible reads information about uh, which machines you want to manage from your inventory. Also, you can pass an IP address to an 80 hot command you need to you need inventory to take advantage of the full flexibility and uh, repeatability of Ansible. For example, how can we do that? We can create a basic inventory uh, like this. We can create a hosts file, a file which named hosts and uh, eight of you line inside of it. For example, here we got an IP address. Um, but here's the problem. I, I don't know how to define the port for now, but I'll try it out. First, let's just create a hosts file. So what we can do here is to create a hosts. Uh, inside it, I'm going to do this. This is our local machine. Beyond the basics, you your inventory can store much more than IPs and that you can create a list, set a variable values for a single host with host variables or a set of rows for multiple hosts with that. Connecting to the remote nodes, Ansible communicates with remote machines over the SSH protocol. By default, Ansible uses native OpenSSH and connects to remote machines using your current user LAN, just as SSH does. Action, check your SSH connections. Confirm that you can connect using SSH to all the nodes in your inventory using the same user LAN. If necessary, add your public SSH key to the ozone re last key file. Beyond the basics, you can override the default remote user LAN in several ways, including passing the U parameter to the command line, setting the user information in your inventory file, setting user information in your configuration file, setting environment variables. Uh, check out this command to, for, for details. Let's go on because I really want to know how can I actually specify the user LAN. So here's one way. How can you do that? You use this command. 
Okay, here we go. Uh, let's say, let me do this. I'm going to run this command. So, as for with the user land of uh, uh, wait a minute, let's say where the problem comes from. Okay, here I do it again. As well with the user land of test, we run a module which is called ping. Let's run it out. The following arguments are required. Pattern. Yeah, that was interesting. Let's um give it a inventor when when let's say inventory, which is a host. Again, pattern required. So ping what? Ping my host. Let's head the running button. Another, the following arguments are required. Pattern. Let me do this uh, again. Not working, guys. I think this link is totally uh, useless. It doesn't actually um, guide us to the right uh, usage of this uh, toe. Okay, then let's uh, run the first SBO commands from here. SBO all with a module of pin. Provided the host's list is empty, only local host is available. Note that implement state localhost does not match all. Then let's specify the host's file here. No, that's not working, so sadly. I didn't see this output at all. Uh, how about we change the host to... Oh, that's already this one. Okay, if we use if configure, we could say the other host land, which is uh, which is the same thing as local host, but with a different uh, port number or with, with different IP address. Let's say if we change it with this uh, kind of IP, would it work or not? Here we go. So now we host file get an IP address like this. And we run this command again. Still, we get that uh, kind of error. Okay, what if I add the IP address inside of this uh, file? For example, we say something like this. It's very clear. Now we run this command again. Okay, we got it working. So for some reason, we cannot just create a host file right in here. We need to add it into this file. That's weird. Here we got an error. Unreachable. Failed to connect to the host grow SSH. Kind of things like this. Permission denied. I was thinking if I could change this port to 2222 because uh, in, 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 let's say, in this port, I have created a Docker SSH service. Uh, in another words, if I use a command like this, I could be able to get into a machine. It should be. Why? Okay, let's start the service that I have. Okay, now if I run this command again, I should be able to get into a new machine, new Linux machine. Alright, for the same reason, let's run this command again. Failed to connect to the host will SSH, so it didn't uh, use or port configuration here. So sad. Oh, you know what? Maybe we could change the user to something else. For example, we can change it to test. We run, run this kind of command again, still get an error. Uh, if we change the host's configuration like this, let's say, like this one, will it work or not? Let's try it out. Permission denied. Well, I start wondering if we could, uh, oh, we could do this, let's say. We could use a command called SSH copy ID to actually copy a We could use this command to copy your um, public uh, talking into that machine. 
and after that we should be able to run this kind of thing without any problem here we go success um, we have success so it shows us uh, we could uh, do that kind of thing by doing something like this only if we uh, specify the user land with test okay so that's the first step what else now run a live command on all of your nodes for now or we only got one node or one server one server all right so let's run this kind of command field so uh whenever let's say So again, no matter what of command that we run, we must pass it the U with our user land. Now let's try it again. Yeah, we got it right. For this command, we have run an echo software with a hello string. Now we run our first playbook. Our play playbook will be stored inside of a YAML file. For example, now if I create a test that YAM file or YML file, I pass those uh, lines of code in. We probably need to specify the user land. I don't know how to do that. Uh, from a post, we know that we could add the following to our inventory file. For now, the test.yml is our test file. So again, this file is our test file. So we added those comments on top of everything. Let's say if it's working or not. The user would be equal to test. The SSH password also equal to past. Although we could just ignore it since we already have the, let's say, the key, the public key. Okay. Then let's say how can we how can we write? We could say ansible playbook without file. We have here we go. We got an error. We were unable to read either as Johnson or YAML. Uh, so we probably did something wrong with the uh, configuration. I don't know if this kind of format works or not, but uh, let's try it out. For this case, we still get an error. Okay, probably we should create a inventory file. Inside of this file, we define our host and its uh, its port with some configurations for it. For example, the test the user land would be equal to test. The password would also be equal to test, and the three is are the variables for this application. We save it. On the other hand, we comment out the old files inside of this one. And we delete those codes in here. Again, how do we how do we run it? We do this kind of thing. We do it again. I'll get an error. Aspen Playbook with test YML. Here we got no hosts matched. Yeah, that's simply we didn't pass the uh, victory to it. Okay, now I got it. Uh, we should probably do things like this. You know, we pass our inventory file to Ansible playbook by using this 
argument、uh, flag, and in the end, it is a playbook、uh, file, and we get an error: failed message. To use the SSH connection type with passwords, you must、uh, install the SSH pass program. Um, so we just have to install it right in here. SSH SSH pass. Okay, let's install it. All right. Now, if we run this task again, no problem would happen. All we need is the SSH pass. But normally, I guess it's not necessary. Oh, it's necessary for some reason. Um, some of our server. If you want to log into your server, you have to provide a password. No public key or some kind of things like that. Anyway, let's go on. If you want to check out whether it's created a file inside of your machine, you could just get into your machine and do a check about it. For example, you can go to temp, and from here you got that file right in here. So for somehow you have automatically for creating such a file on your、uh, remote server. Beyond the basics, by default, Ansible uses SFTP to transfer files. If the machine or device you want to manage does not support SFTP, you can switch to SCP mod. The files are placed in a temporary directory and executed from there. If you need privilege,、uh, some kind of things、uh, to run commands past the become flag Batman. What is the Batman? I don't know. Um. Oh, become user of the userland Batman. Or if you only pass the become, you would get into a sudo com、uh, permission.、Uh, for example, let's、uh. Let's say so. Basically, we have accomplished the most basic usage of of the Aspen. Uh, we could go to much more a、uh, higher level by by getting into this section, working with playbox. But for now, I'll just、uh, stop in here because this is a simple video just to get get you into this kind of automation framework. So that's today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.